I want to talk a little bit about blocking. Um, blocking is something that is normally done uh, for watercolors and it refers to uh, making the paper flat while you paint um, so that when you're finished you end up with a relatively flat uh, finished piece. So um, basically what you're trying to do is um, keep whatever you're painting on from rippling and bulging and doing all the things that happen when you put water onto a surface that uh, maybe doesn't really want to remain flat when it gets wet. So um, the first thing that you need is something to block onto. Um, this is a piece of uh, paneling from my living room. It's a scrap. Um, it's pretty thin, and uh, but it's very rigid. Um, you don't want to block onto something like chipboard or um, anything that's really absorbent. You want something that's rigid and um, really isn't going to suck the water. Um, I have been known to put plastic between uh, the board and my paper, but I'm not going to do that this time because I've blocked on this before and it, it does pretty well. So the next thing you need is ma masking tape, um, relatively narrow tape. And all you really have to do is tape your piece down so that a little bit of the tape is on the edge of your paper and the rest of it is on your surface. And you want to make this as flat as possible. So, and you'll notice that I've printed out my images so that they allow room for this taping. And there's also space in between each individual image so that I can uh, do background work without worrying about getting paint on an adjoining image. And I'm taping all four sides. And this piece was a little short, that's okay. The goal is just to tape the sheet down to the surface flat. So, and one of the perks of doing this is if you're working on multiple pieces, you can block your image down. Like I've got this one blocked down here. I could block a second one down over here. And then while this sheet is drying, paint on this sheet. And not have to worry about moving things that are wet around and maybe making them ripple or whatever. So now this is all set for priming. This is uh, a laser printed, black laser print on Bristol. And because of the size of these images, my line weights are uh, very fine. And um, I really don't want to obliterate too much of that. So I'm thinking I'd like to do white gesso like I usually do, um, but I'm afraid that I'm going to obliterate like all the little delicate lines of these dahlias or all of her um, uh, face because it's so tiny. So I'm going to mix a little bit of white gesso with a little bit of clear gesso to get something that's relatively transparent, but also 
primer rather than paint. Because I really do want to lay down a paintable ground on this Bristol. Even though it is paintable by itself, I would feel better if uh, there were a little primer on it. So this is my white and this is my clear and I'm just going to mix them together. And I'm going to try it on this one. Yeah. So I'm laying down a little bit of white. Actually, it's a little, tiny bit off white. This um, Liquitex Gesso is not quite bright white. And I can still see all my lines through this, but I'm getting that grittiness of the primer, that grab for my paint. And really, it doesn't take very much to prime this. Like I said, Bristol is receptive um, uh, to paint. I just want to sort of seal off a little bit of its absorbent qualities. Bristol tends to suck paint, and I would like it to suck less. So there we go. And you can still see all of my line work. Um, nothing has been obliterated. And I'll find it very easy to work over this surface. So, and you can see that um, my Bristol is uh, rippling a little bit because it's wet. So I'm just gonna let it sit. And uh, because it's blocked, it should uh, lay back down. I've let this dry completely. And as you can see, it has, gone from being very ripply um, as I was applying the gesso to completely flat. And that's exactly what we want from a blocked piece. Each time I work a wet layer, it might get a little ripply, but if I let it dry completely, it goes back to being flat. And that will help me as I go to apply these images to the finished tins.